This video aims to give you some practice with predicate logic proofs. What I'll do is five proofs that focus on existential introduction and universal elimination. The two interlem rules that I consider to be the easier two of the four interlem predicate logic proofs. What I won't do is explain what these rules are. If you're interested in a video like that, you should check out the prior videos and I'll put links in the description below. One suggestion I have for you is to pause the video now, work through these proofs, and then proceed to watch the video. Watching me maybe do the proof will give you a model and it will allow you to kind of check your answers. Let's start by setting up the proof. So the setup involves writing the formulas to the left of the turnstile down and then working through the proof to derive the conclusion. So let's set up the first proof by writing out the premises or the formulas that we're going to reason from to the conclusion. Now that we have the proof set up, the goal is to reason from PA and QA to the conclusion that I've written over here just as a helpful way of remembering what the conclusion is. So we'll start by reasoning from PA and QA and using conjunction introduction to form this conjunction, but here we can't take the PA and QA and replace those names A with X. All we can do here is reason to PA and QA, taking line one and two and forming a conjunction out of those two formulas. So this is by one, two, conjunction introduction. But now that we have this conjunction, we can make use of existential introduction. And in using existential introduction, we can replace at least one of the names in this formula at line three with an existentially quantified variable. And if we replace more than one name, then we need to make sure the replacement is uniform. That is, we're replacing the same name with the variable. So we can write EX, PX, and QX. So we're replacing these names, A, with the variable X, and this variable is quantified by the existential quantifier. So this is from line three, existential introduction. There's a couple things to note about this particular proof. Let's say we had PA and QB instead. So rather than having A and A, we have A and B. If we were to use existential introduction on this formula, we could reason to EX px and qb or we could reason to ex pa and qx so since this is not the same name we can't replace both of the variables with a single existentially quantified variable in addition going back to 4 right here another formula that we could reason to would be EX, PX, and QA. So we're not required to replace all the names with an existentially quantified variable, but whenever we want to replace more than one, we need to make sure it's the same name with the same variable. So let's look at a proof that focuses on the use of universal elimination. So here I have our, our entailment set up here. We have AXPX, or everyone's a person. We have AYLYY, or everyone loves themselves. And then we want a reason to, let's say Bob is a person and Al loves Al, or Al loves himself. So we'll set the proof up by writing out the two formulas. So let's do that first. Now that we have the proof or derivation set up, the goal will be to reason to the conclusion. So we'll start by taking the first formula, which is AXPX, and reasoning to PB. And the way we get PB, the way we derive PB, is by using line one and the universal elimination rule. The universal elimination rule allows us to reason from a universally quantified formula to an unquantified formula or a, to a formula where we're removing the universal quantifier and replacing every bound variable x, every universally quantified variable that's bound, with any name that we want. 
and the replacement again must be uniform. So now that we have PB, we can use line 2, which says everyone loves themselves, to reason to LAA. We could pick any name that we wanted, BB or CC or DD, but the reason we, and the reason we pick he, A here is because it's in the conclusion, um, and we also need to note that the replacement must be uniform. So if we are going to replace these two universally quantified variables, Y, then we need to make sure it's BB, CC, not AB, not BC, not uh, a different combination. They need to be the same name. And so we have line two, and we're reasoning to line four, and this is by two universal elimination. Now that we have these two formulas, we have the two ingredients or two formulas that are part of our conjunction, which is in the conclusion. We can take line three and line four and put those two formulas together using conjunction introduction. And so what I'm doing here is taking line three, which is PB, line four, which is LAA, and reasoning to the conjunction of those two formulas. This is three, four, conjunction introduction. In this next proof, we'll reason from AXLXX to EXLXX. That is, from the formula that everyone loves themselves to the formula that someone loves themselves. The first step in this proof is to set the whole thing up. And so we'll set it up by writing the formula to the left of the turnstile. And then we'll try to reason to the formula to the right of the turnstile. So we'll write AX LXX which, as a premise. And now the goal will be to reason to EX LXX. We'll start by using universal elimination. And we'll replace each X with any name of our choosing. And here I'll pick A. And this is by one universal elimination. Now we can make use of existential elimination, replacing each one of these A's with any name, replacing each one of these A's with the existentially quantified variable X, E X L X X. And this is by line two, existential introduction. In this proof, we're reasoning from AX, LX, that is everyone loves themselves, to the formula that someone loves someone. It's important to note about this conclusion that this sentence does not say, that is this formula does not say that a, an individual loves another individual in the sense that this other individual is distinct from the first individual. It would be true provided you have at least one individual that loves themselves, because that's one individual, let's just call them Al, who loves another individual, and that, just, that person just happens to be Al. So we'll reason to, or derive the conclusion from AX LXX. We'll start by setting up the proof, which is AX LXX, and we will next reason to LAA. We're replacing each one of these universally quantified variables with any name that we want, and we're making sure our replacement of those variables is with the same name. And this is by universal elimination. Now, in looking at our formula, which is the conclusion, we'll notice that we want to add two existential quantifiers here. And when we use existential introduction, we're only required to replace one of the names and replace it with an existentially quantified variable. We're not required to replace both of the names. And so at line three, we'll reason to EY, LAY. So we're replacing just this second name here with the existentially quantified variable Y. And so this says something like Al loves someone. And so this is by line two, existential introduction. Now that we have this existentially quantified formula at line three, we can use existential introduction on this formula, replacing this A with a existentially quantified variable. And so we can reason to EX, EY, 
And here we're replacing this A with an X, so it'll be LXY. And so from line 3, we reason to line 4 using line 3, existential introduction. In this proof, what we have is the universally quantified formula AX, AY, LXY, and the conclusion is EZ, LZZ. To think about this in terms of an English argument, we might say that this particular formula says that everyone loves everyone. And we might think of a concrete example of this by imagining a domain of three people, and each one of those individuals is in this loving relationship to everyone else in the domain, including in being a loving relationship to oneself. So not only does, let's say, Al love Liz and Liz love Tech, and Tech love Al, but also Al loves Al, Liz loves Liz, and Tech loves Tech. So every individual in the domain loves themselves as well as everyone else in the domain. And we want to reason to the conclusion that someone loves someone. We'll start this proof by simply setting up the proof, and since we have only one formula, we'll start the proof by simply writing this particular formula at line one. Now that we have this formula at line one, we'll reason to the conclusion. And the way we'll go about doing this is by removing these universal quantifiers using universal elimination. We'll start by removing the universal existential, removing, excuse me, the universal quantifier that binds for x. And so we'll use one universal elimination, and we're removing this outermost quantifier here. We're removing the universal quantifier that's binding this x, and so we'll need to replace every instance of x with any name that we want. And so I'll write a y here, and now I want to make sure I replace this x with a name, and here I'm going to pick a. And so I'll leave the y alone. Now that I have this universally quantified expression at line 2, I'm going to reason using universal elimination again to a formula. And I want to make sure I replace this y, not with b, but since I ultimately want to make use of existential introduction here, replacing each of the names with an existentially quantified variable, and I want it to be the same variable, I will replace this y here with the name that I've already used, which is a. So I'll reason to Al loves Al. Now at line four, I can use the existential introduction rule, which allows me to take each one of these names and replace it with an existentially quantified variable. So I'll write EZ, LZZ, and so this is by line three, existential introduction. So what I've done here is reason from everyone loves everyone, this kind of state here, to the sentence, someone loves themselves which is this state over here.